An electron microscope is a type of microscope that uses an electron beam to illuminate a specimen and produce a magnified image. Here is a picture of a, one of the earliest electron microscopes uh, created by German physicist Ernst Ruska back in the early 30s. So until now, if you wanted to see an electron microscope, you had to take a field trip. Uh, today, uh, schools are actually getting these Hitachi TM3000 tabletop electron microscopes loaned to school districts and museums and communities. Uh, the TM3000 is a scanning electron microscope that has a touchscreen. And uh, we have one over here at the high school. And uh, we're going to go take a look over at uh, Mr. Boyer's nanotechnology class uh, so he can give us a little demo. So we're over here at the high school. We're going to check out Mr. Boyer's class and the electron microscope. Hey, Mr. Boyer. Hi, how are you? Tell us a little bit about what you have here. Oh, super. Um, this is called a scanning electron microscope. So it sounds kind of complicated, but when you kind of get to the basics of what it does, it's amazing. It's an amazing tool that scientists and engineers use to analyze materials at a very high magnification. So you know traditional microscopes you may have seen before, they use light. Light will shine up through a series of lenses and get magnified so when you look through, you can see the sample. Well, with an electron microscope, we need to measure things that are smaller than light. Hard to imagine, but things can be smaller and things are smaller than light. And so this machine, the scanning electron microscope, uses electrons to actually analyze, not light. So inside here, we have something that's called an electron gun that fires a 15,000 volt beam down through a series of lenses, but they're not lenses like glass, they're lenses that are electricity and they control the position of the electron inside this chamber. This chamber is where we mount samples. Right now I actually have a rock crystal that we were able to harvest out of inside of a device and I just wanted to show you we're zoomed in at a lower magnification but enough to see what does the surface look like and within seconds we can zoom in on a surface to see really what does the surface of a rock or a crystal really look like. And we can start to see the fractures, and if you notice this is glowing brighter, that usually means it's a different element on the periodic table. It glows differently because of the way the inter interaction of the electrons that hit it cause it to show up on the image. And so we could take images, we could save video, and um, you can analyze many different samples, things that are biological, things that are not. Um, but this, this microscope is an amazing tool, and it's a lot of fun. So what if we were to use the scanning electron microscope to analyze what looks like inside of a baby tooth? So to the left here, this is the inside of a tooth. We decided to analyze it on the microscope, and let me show you what it looks like. Here you can see the tooth as the, the inside broken away so we can see the whole inside. Did you ever hear of enamel? That's the stuff you want to protect? That's this white border edge on the outside of the tooth. Inside the tooth, if you've ever felt cold pain when you chew on something cold, these are the nerves and the bundles inside called pulp that actually can sense that. And that's connected to roots inside your, your body to actually uh, sense this. One last thing in case you didn't know, your teeth have holes in them already. Inside it's called dentin. These are the tiny little tubes that help uh, control your teeth and sensitivity. And they call those dentin. I'd like to thank Mr. Boyer for allowing us to stop by his classroom today and check out the TM3000, the Hitachi School Lending Program Electron Microscope. Super, thank you very much.